Hi, you guys. Today we are going to read a short little book, Happiness is a Choice. This is something I say all the time and people get so mad at me for it. They're like, no, I'm not choosing my thoughts. I am being possessed by thoughts and they're not mine and it's not fair. And so we're going to talk about it. And yes, I made my dress and it is made from 1930s silk. Gorgeous silk charmeuse and it has a swan flying on the print. Happiness is a Choice by Diane H. Davis. Chapter one, a fresh start. It's a new year and the first day of the rest of your life and you're tempted to make a new year's resolution only you've never had any luck sticking with one in the past. This time though, it's different because you have chosen to read a quick, fun, easy self-help booklet with only two main ideas, promising that it's not difficult to get good things coming your way. This fresh start goes beyond making resolutions. It involves a couple of fundamental shifts in perspective that will lead you to select different actions which will lead to refreshing, rewarding, and different results. You can read this information while you eat your sandwich at lunchtime. It's your life and you can choose to see things differently, especially when you understand what the potential payoffs are. Chapter two, why resolve matters. A half-hearted effort will get you half-baked results. Every haphazard approach will end up with muddled events, mixed emotions, and hurt feelings. And you want better than that for yourself and your friends and your loved ones, right? So resolve does matter. To be resolved is to be determined and decisive. A resolution is a formal statement expressing your opinion, will, or intent, having a measure of sharpness to it so it's easily understood, recognized, or remembered. If you want to get somewhere, you follow a roadmap. If you want to have good outcomes, you need to make and follow your resolutions. Your resolutions are your guides in life, helping you get to the kind of future you want for yourself. Chapter 3. Everyone longs for love, appreciation, and recognition. It's real basic, and children who are lacking in it resort to negative behavior for attention. As an adult, you certainly wouldn't want to come across as a spoiled, unruly child, desperate to be the center of attention regardless of the consequences. There are two types of adults who fall into this needy category, probably without realizing it. And the name society has come up for such people who seek everyone's attention are, one, adrenaline junkies, and two, drama queens and kings. The reason such people get these labels is because they are behaving at extreme levels of operation. Please don't misunderstand the message here because it is okay to occasionally engage in an exciting event or to relay an amazing story or information, but not as a way of life. Most people are functioning in the normal range of behavior and it's perfectly acceptable and appropriate to expect to receive some love and appreciation from people in everyday course of life. In fact, that's how it works. Even if you have a spouse or a significant other, you will benefit from having a network of supportive friends throughout life. Ultimately, it's our ability to uns- Hey, be nice. Horse drama. Horse drama queens. Mares. <laughs> Ultimately, it's our ability to successfully interact with people that determine the overall quality of our lives. Chapter four, a fair exchange. The drive for love, respect, attention, and appreciation is relentless. Most people learn early on to be polite and they receive the love needed from others with grace, returning compliments and good feelings. This is a key aspect in life. Exchanges between people need to balance out over time so everyone gets their needs met. The buzzwords words for this in balance are, mutually beneficial social interactions. Please note the use of the term over time. 
Life is give and take, and it's okay to sometimes give more than the other person gives, as long as the balance in your life comes up even over time. You are not competing with people and there are no scoreboards. It's all about feeling good and loved. Chapter five, jump right in. So in a social exchange, who goes first? Who starts the conversation? If you start it, does that guarantee you get to talk about things that interest you? Or suppose you let others approach you and you patiently listen to their concerns and then when you finally get to tell them about your life, they say they're out of time and leave. Wow, some people are like that. How much selfishness from others should you take? How much beyond a balance point are you supposed to be able to go before reaching a state of high frustration? Sure, these are simplistic questions, but they make it easier to understand how basic the need for love is and that it's filled by other people. Don't wait to initiate an exchange or conversation. There is nothing to lose and lots to gain. It's your life and you have a lot to share. So go share it and get back the love and appreciation you need. Of course, some people are depleted. They are on the short end of the stick and they will need more. So give it to them, if at all possible. Your balance comes over time. Chapter six, protect yourself if you must. Let's talk a little bit more about the people who are on the short end of the stick. The people who seem to need lots and lots of time and attention. They are not all the same. Some people are bottomless pits. You could never fill their tanks and they are unable to give much, if anything, away back to you. So as you get better at socializing, you will learn to see the difference between types of needy people and you should protect yourself from hopeless cases. Be polite, chat, but 10 minutes max, it's not your responsibility to try and fix someone. You can point such people in the right direction, self-help, but you should avoid them in the future if you can. Chapter seven, be positively generous. Here it is, the first of two simple resolutions that will really reward you. Be positively generous with people. It's so very basic. You get what you give. It's karma. What goes around comes back to you. Not necessarily from the same people you gave to, but from someone. When you give love away to people by being kind, thoughtful, friendly, listening, donating to your local horse rescue, heartofgoldsanctuary.org, it will return to you multiplied don't go through life focusing on your empty tank. Be generous with your time and attention and fill other people's tanks. And your tank will overflow in due time. I must say this is very true. Can confirm I do that. Every social interaction is an opportunity to practice generosity and to be positive and appreciative of the other person and about what's important to them. Learn about their plans to achieve their dreams and goals. Be happy for their accomplishments. Praise their efforts toward their ends. Smile and nod positively. <laughs> but be authentic and genuine. Most people will return the love and care what's important to you for your sake. Accept that love. Exchange phone numbers. Try to include them in future activities. However, if you are with someone who tries to convert you to their ideas or beliefs, and you've just spent time listening to them for their sake, and they make no inquiry as to what's important to you, please excuse yourself to go to the bathroom and know in your heart that you have done a good thing. Let's repeat, do not allow yourself to be abused by such a thoughtless, selfish bore. Just politely excuse yourself and leave. Then try to avoid that unenlightened person in the future. If he or she is a relative and your exposure is chronic, use the strategy of going late and leaving early. But while in their presence, give away love in keeping with who you are and how you want to be. In time, you've limited the sorry, in the time you've limited to the exchange, be generous with positive energy and love for someone who obviously so very dearly needs it. 
Remember, the balance isn't always even at every social exchange. It balances for you over time by scheduling activities you want and declining those you care not to attend. It's not your job to fix someone else. It's their responsibility. People who are depleted and needy must heal themselves. You can be generous briefly and let them vent and point them in the right direction and then excuse yourself. Be generous with others and good to yourself. Resolution one, be positively generous with people. Chapter eight, the reticent person. I suppose I've never heard that word, the reticent person. Have you ever spent time with someone who needs, seems determined to not share any information? All questions are answered with yes or no, and the conversation dies. What conversation exactly? There is no meaningful exchange taking place with such a person. It's like trying to talk to a brick wall. So how can you give away love to a person who won't go first and share information? Are you tempted to jump in and spill your guts about what interests you just for the appearance of having a conversation? Don't do it. You'll come away feeling empty and somehow violated. Such people are reserved and cautious, reticent. Okay, now I know what that means. And what they need is time without conversation. So give it to them, smile, stand, sit in their company for a while, make positive comments about the music, the party, the event, the weather, offer to get refills on the drinks, 10 minutes max. Then excuse yourself and go to the bathroom. Do not get sucked into an obviously uneven exchange. Chapter nine, you must take your turn. Spending time with a reticent person is a test of your resolve to give away love generously during a social exchange. That's why the advice is to limit your time with such a person to 10 minutes, to not spill your guts and to simply allow silence to occur. If you don't, you will likely feel somehow cheated, used, violated, manipulated, or unloved. Not a good feeling. So when you go forward with this new resolution to be positively generous with people, you must be prepared to share your thoughts, interests, information, ideas, desires, and plans with them when it's time for you to take your turn. You certainly do not want to end an exchange with the other person feeling bad. Remember, most social exchanges are mutually beneficial and do not fall into extremes. Making a resolution to give away love being generous simply means you are going to pay closer attention to social interactions, to not be stingy with people, but to protect yourself if necessary. Balance over time for yourself is the objective while leaving a trail of good feelings behind you. As mentioned earlier, every social encounter is an opportunity to practice your new resolve to be positively generous with people and to have your needs for love and appreciation met in return. It's simple, yet old habits are hard to break. And if you have several friends who are basically negative, you could be going into your future with a depleted tank because negative people tend to be extra needy, sucking the life out of you, which makes it hard to be generous. So cut back on the amount of time you spend with negative friends for a while. You can't fix them. They have to help themselves. Be polite, be patient, be generous, but reduce your exposure. Your new resolve will carry you into the better future you are moving toward. One where social interactions result in a mutual benefit. Being open to opportunities for new friendships means you are not a rigid or stuck person but rather are optimistic and flexible, friendly, happy, easygoing, and generous. You will be filled with love and appreciation as the balance is restored over the course of time because you are willing to make changes in your life. Chapter 11, change. So let's talk a little bit about change. Change is not a snap. Most people struggle with making changes in their lives because it's easier said than done. Here's the thing about chance change. There's a naturally occurring resistance to it, especially when it comes to ourselves. The tendency is to try to change others instead of ourselves. The truth is, though, you can only change yourself. Other people can only change in reaction to your changes. 
the choices you make influence people around you to respond the same or differently from before. Overcoming the resistance to actually doing things you know you want to do or to discontinue bad habits is a big challenge and usually takes resolve. That's why people usually make resolutions to help themselves be strong. Remember, a resolution is a formal statement expressing your intent to take action. Your resolutions will give you the strength needed to stay the course until a new habit is formed. Change is a big deal, but it is possible when you understand it and proceed with a plan of attack and determination. You can be how you want to be and the way you want to be when you put your mind to it. You can change yourself. No one else can do it for you. You only control yourself and changing yourself is a big job, but it's doable when you understand the process and the payoffs. Chapter 12. Are people avoiding you? Back in chapter seven, where the discussion was about being positively generous with people, the theory was introduced that what goes around comes back around to you, that you receive what you put out there multiplied and not necessarily from the same person you gave to, karma. The advice was to pay attention to how people are, to be generous with your attention to them, but to avoid the unenlightened ones in the future by simply declining invitations or going late and leaving early to limit your exposure to toxic, selfish people to protect yourself. After all, it's your responsibility to make decisions for yourself about yourself. So now here's the question. What if you're a person people seem to be avoiding? And please don't be tempted to blame others for your problems. Just know that sometimes it's necessary to get out of your own way. Think about this question. Are people avoiding me? Prudent people routinely engage in introspection. That is looking inward at themselves. That is in the same self-examination and reflection to check to make sure they're still on track. This is a good thing to do periodically. Do not confuse this with being self-centered. This topic goes back to the chapter about adrenaline junkies and drama queens and kings. Self-addiction is not a pretty picture and people avoid ugly. Self-absorbed people are, well, absorbing. They suck or take in anything near them, like a sponge or a black hole. You certainly want to avoid being self-centered, and you want to do that by caring about what is important to other people for their sake. But maybe people are simply avoiding your negativity. Are you negative? Do you dwell on all the downsides in life? Are you fixated on how things were in the past to the point of being frozen in the present? Because if this, it was a mosquito and it bit me, no. Excuse me. Because if this describes you, you probably drain people of their energy in an unconscious effort to fill your own empty tank. And social interaction is how people fill each other's tanks. Occasionally, it happens with the exchange between people is uneven because of hardships, but the flow must balance out over time. So remember to work at improving your situations and to heal yourself so that eventually you can be generous with others again. And are you making an effort? Because you are reading this self-help information. Introspection is a good thing. Avoiding self-centeredness in yourself and others. Chapter 13, no negatives. In the preceding chapter, the question was posed, are you negative? And hopefully you were able to honestly say, no, I don't think I'm a negative person. People who are searching for answers are typically upbeat, optimistic souls. If your heart of hearts though, you know you're depressed. And if you will now pick up the phone and call for the expert help that could benefit you, nothing you read in a self-help book will be a magic bullet. So get yourself to a therapist or down to a doctor for the legal and medical help available. There, that's been covered. Now let's get to the simple resolution number two. No negative comments or complaints. Again, it's so very basic. If you create a negative field around yourself, you will repel people 
and there is no way to fill your depleted tank without friends and warm, loving people to exchange with. This simple resolution is a contradiction in itself because it is negative, but it is the best way to get this point across. So much of our lives is wasted by looking at the problems, complaining, rather than counting our blessings and speaking of positive things. For many people, being negative is a way of life. There's always a reason why nothing can be done about anything, and you don't want to be one of those people. So practice saying nothing if you can't think of anything positive to say. The new motto here is refrain from complaining. Every social interaction is an opportunity to practice being positive and to generously share the habit of counting blessings. Resolution two, no negative comments or complaints. Two simple resolutions. You can do this and rewards will be yours for the rest of your life. Be positively generous with people. No negative comments or complaints. Two simple resolutions and implementing them will make a profound difference in the quality of your life. Look at the bright side, think positively, give people the benefit of the doubt. Pay attention to what's important to others and compliment them on their efforts, even if it's not your cup of tea. Bite your tongue, say nothing unless it's positive. A good life and good times will follow. Changing old patterns will take some effort to overcome that naturally occurring resistance to change, but you can do it and enjoy the benefits. Happiness can be your choice. Afterthought, a good start. Knowing who you are, what you stand for, and how you want to be is as important as having a skeleton to support your physical body. Resolving to be both positively generous and to refrain from negativity is a good beginning. The end. My little kitty Kalua, did you want to come see me? You want to come up here, baby girl? Kalua, come on, check it out, baby. Kalua. She's very shy. She was feral not long ago, but she's learning, learning to trust. Come here, check it out. You could come up here. I know you're an acrobat, little girl. She's thinking about it. Where's that baby? You want to come up here? You want to come up here, baby? Kalua. <laughs> She's acting so coy right now. Just very typically kitty-like. Ah, I got your tail. Come on. Come up here. Come on, Kalua. I know you want to. You want to so much. I will give you pets. No, she wants to eat grass. And I am being... Oh! Of course, the moment I decide to leave, she hops up here and says, oh yes, I think I would love to join you for some petting. I love you, baby. And see, this is a very good example of an even exchange relationship. I give her lots and lots of love and attention, and she flops back and looks at me with love in her eyes and appreciates her life, and she hunts all of the mice, rats, moles, and gophers out of this whole property. There have not been any more rat issues ever since we got Miss Kalua here. So, very pleased with this wonderfully, mutually beneficial relationship between me and Kitty Kalua. Okay, I will see you soon. Thanks for listening. I hope that you choose happiness.